ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here joined by a special guest here today. We have Mike O'Reilly from the Calgary Lawn Bowling Club. Uh, welcome to the show, Mike. Oh, hey. Well, thank you very much. This has always been uh, an honor of mine to to want to be on the show with you guys, you know. Uh, and I wanted to thank you all for what you're doing for our sport across the country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great thing you're doing for bowlers uh, here in Canada. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, I guess we can get right into it. So to get a little background on uh, your club there, so like Calgary Lawn Bowling Club, I know has had some changes in the last few years, uh, significant growth and a lot of things have happened. So what sort of happened with Calgary Lawn Bowling Club over about the last five or so years? Well, it's it's interesting uh, you say that, Michael, because uh, our club got relocated about six years ago. Uh, we had been uh, located in the Beltline area of downtown Calgary for many, many decades, and uh, the city did a land swap with our club and relocated us to the community of Spruce Cliff, and they built us uh, two sets of absolutely great greens, new clubhouse uh, with stadium lighting, um, and with that moving into the neighborhood brought a whole new group of, of bowlers to the club. And uh, I was one of those along with my wife. And uh, we had been couples who had been hearing about this club moving into the neighborhood, watching the construction. And we laughed and said at one New Year's Eve party, wouldn't it be amazing if we all just kind of got together and as couples and went out to the club? and uh, tried lawn bowling. And, uh, you know, it, it, once the club came, um, we joined, we had a great time. We doubled the membership. We went to about 125 members from the 65. Wow. Uh, a whole bunch of us stayed, uh, brought new members into it. And lo and behold, I've been president now for four years and uh, having a great time with it. Great community, lovely sport. I knew nothing about lawn bowls before it came to the community, I've got to say, but absolutely fell in love with it um, so quickly. That's awesome. Um, speaking about that, um, you mentioned your your growth in membership um, across Canada. We know that um, membership is hit and miss based on province that you go to and club. Um, we have a lot of success, I guess, attracting new people, but we, we tend to have a lot of trouble keeping them for any length of time. Um, what kind of things are you doing at Calgary Lawn? Because I, I hear through social media and I, see, I hear through um, just people out in Alberta that your club is doing such a great job of, of getting in and keeping uh, new members. What kind of things are you doing to do that? Well, I, I got to say it is still probably our biggest objective to try to improve on our operations within our club to, to retain those members when they come. Um, we've started what we call a buddy system uh, at the club this year. Uh, this is the first year we've really focused on it. And it involves having an existing member, uh, making sure that, that new bowlers are made to feel welcomed. Um, they're not being criticized on the greens um, and shown all the different game formats. And if they have questions, there's always a board member or somebody who's available to, to reach out to them. Um, I've personally had very close friends who came and joined our club, but because of one instance of one person barking at them across the green, um, they gave up and said, we'll never be back again. Um, and I, I really have to, uh, to credit uh, Jake and, and Anna at uh, Bulls Canada for uh, you know approaching us a couple of years ago to get us to start thinking strategically about how do we retain and get new members. And uh, they've provided a lot of coaching along the way uh, to help us and, and it's been very effective. And social media has been an uh, active part of it, but you know it's really just getting to know your members when they come in, um, making sure that they know who you are and you know who they are. And like this year, I've, I've learned 70 new member names. Um, I've personally uh, coached them um, through through their uh, beginnings. And uh, I'm always uh, trying to be a friendly face as are our other board members when they arrive. And, and uh, we've, we've had people who considered other clubs in, in Calgary 
And they said, honestly, you know, when, when we looked at the messaging that you put out, um, how friendly and, and uh, uh, welcoming you are to new members, and you're not focused on pushing etiquette as being the primary thing to do, but uh, we see you dressed up in crazy shirts and, you know, having fun at different events. Um, it just was a club uh, that, that they liked and, and were attracted to. So uh, it, it's taken time. It's taken us a couple of years to kind of get the momentum. Uh, and the biggest challenge will be next year. I think, um, and and I think it'll it'll mean reaching out to this year's members early next year, just to just to see in March or April. You know, are you considering coming to the club? How can we make it a great experience? And and I think we're going to put a lot of effort into that in the new year. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of really really good ideas here that I, I I like to hear. So the reaching out to the people early on in the year, I know that's a strategy a lot of clubs have started to enact recently, specifically where. Uh, you send an email out early in the year, see what they can do to improve the club or get them to come back or get people more interested in the sports. So that's brilliant that you guys are doing that. And I know specifically with your social media and just your, your guys' website in general, it's one of the main things that's mm -hmm. attracted me to your guys' club is you have this great website. You have good postings. Like you've done live postings. I've seen uh, like live streams. I think it was just <laughs> the other weekend there. It looked like it was a work in progress, but it – you guys did have some live streams, so uh, pretty pretty active membership when it comes to the technology front. Uh, is that something that kind of came naturally, or is that something you guys have uh, kind of had to like work towards getting the well, membership I to do? I, you know, our, our technology side of it is really a couple of couple of directions. Uh, the live streaming, I've got to thank Peter Mock uh, at our club uh, for encouraging us to even try it. You know, going on Facebook and uh, uh, we provide some commentary and yeah, it's rough around the edges, but you know, it, it seems to work. Um, we, we get about 400 viewings, uh, sometimes uh, 1,200, 1,500 viewings. Um, we, we get people commenting from England, um, sometimes replaying some of the live streaming that we did from events before saying you know it's it's raining here in england and we saw this and we we live we watched the recording and and you know it was pat bird and john mcdonald duking it out for singles <laughs> uh, and uh, you know they loved it they loved it um I, and on our website i really have to thank david wilson who's uh one of our uh, new board members for kind of creating the branding the look uh, the consistency that we have and making our our website really functional and uh, it, it takes a lot of effort, I got to say, you know, it uh, it takes commitment and, uh, you know, we're just very lucky to have a board that that has that kind of talent and, and other volunteers along the way to, to chip in too. Well, I mean, with with our channel, we're, we're no uh, strangers to technical difficulties and, and having <laughs> some some issues and rough edges. So we're, we're right there with you. <laughs> Oh, uh, you guys do a fantastic job. You know, we always look forward to uh, to posting when you're coming up next and, and hitting the highlights. And, uh, you know, it's just great to meet so many great, uh, great faces from across the country. You know, Michael Petuli, yourself, Daryl and Luke. And uh, you've had Derek Dillon out here. And, and uh, it just it helps the community uh, do uh, get to know each other, you know, and, and it that's what keeps me attracted to the sport is that it's not just a game. It's the community. It's all the people you get to know and the personalities and and uh, it's it's just great playing alongside and, and against uh, so many great personalities uh, that come with the sport it's a lot of fun yeah you, you talk about a lot about the community and I, I agree that Lombol's um, the thing that keeps me coming back for more and more and more are the people um, I wouldn't have met the the amount of friends that I have now uh, without probably the sport of Lombol's um, I wanted to ask you about Calgary Lombard Club in particular. It's it's a thriving thriving club. It's a beautiful club. Um, what is it about Calgary Lawn that has produced so many great players and uh, obviously uh, one of the premier coaches in Canada as well? Well, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. It's Derek Dillon. Uh, you know, Derek, uh, his passion. 
um, for introducing the sport and helping new athletes uh, climb that ladder uh, to improve their game um, has been remarkable. He had a huge impact on on me, uh, getting excited about the sport and 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 getting into practice and more competitive levels. And he's inspired me now actually to uh, climb that ladder for the NWCP uh, competitive coaching program, so that um, I can try to help new athletes feel the thrill of standing on the mat at the nationals, um, you know, playing amongst some of Canada's greats. Um, you know, it's the greatest feeling in the world. I've been very lucky. I've been in the sport for six years and I've been to three national events, including the indoors and singles. And I've played, you know, Pat Bird, Greg Wilson, um, Joanna Cooper, like so many amazing players uh, already. And, you know, a, a, another person that I think has, has been so inspirational at our club is Ken Olsvik. You know, uh, Ken and his crew uh, do a fantastic job on our greens, but Ken's passion for the sport and for new players and for competition is second to none. You know, he loves the sport with all his heart, just like Derek does, and it's so infectious amongst all of us. And, and we're so fortunate and we're so grateful to have people with such passion for the sport and for introducing new players and supporting them all the way through. I, I, I think uh, it, it's that kind of commitment um, that people put into the sport that, that really create that drive and that excitement um, within it. We're very lucky. You know, I, I definitely have met Ken a few times myself, and he's a very passionate man specifically about the game. And as you're saying, he's pretty welcoming of pretty much anyone coming in there and wanting to really give bowls a go. Um, we sort of touched on it earlier, like the newer complex, newer greens, Ken, uh, essentially bringing them up from scratch there over the last few years. Uh, you guys just recently had an article in the Globe and Mail, uh, touches about the club in general, sort of how you, your story of how you came in uh, to the club, you couples sort of saw it. Um, I guess, can you guys give us a bit of a background about what, what happened there with the that article? Yeah, sure. You know, um, I, I, I think uh, I, I think we were looking for some national coverage with re with regards to our sport, and uh, we were just very fortunate they reached out to Alberta, um, and and uh, I think we've been one of the provinces along with Saskatchewan um, who has been fortunate to be able to add members, and they wanted to kind of find out a little bit more about the story behind it, and and I you know we had a huge advantage right because we're moving a club into a new location. And that that's going to help, um, you, you know, uh, bring bring some new interest. And so we had that heads up, and and you know we had new facilities, new greens, uh, new excitement coming in. I think that all that all helped. But you know you got to work at it still. You know, like it. it uh, it's all too easy to kind of keep your club kind of closed and inclusive. And what we are really trying to do is uh, make our our club feel safe, inclusive and welcoming uh, to everyone who comes through our gates and who has interest. And uh, it, it's amazing how people kind of look over the fence. They kind of watch. And, you know, I've had people tell me, you know, that it looks like a fun environment and it looks like you're there to support each other. And and uh, it gives them encouragement to, to, to come in. So, you know, the message I would give to clubs across Canada is that uh, uh, don't kid yourself. You know, people are watching the activities of what's going on in your greens. And, you know, the 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 funner, the louder, um, the more boisterous you are, uh, the more welcoming um, things appear. And, you know, we're all having fun out there on the greens and don't be afraid to show it. You know, we, we support each other. And when you make a great shot, you know, be loud about it and, and enjoy it. And, and uh, you know, we've, we've just been very fortunate at Calgary Lawn to, to have a new facility. Um, we've worked hard at getting uh, grant money to get new equipment. Um, you know, we've put in some fantastic, uh, you know, shades all the way from Australia. We've got new picnic tables uh, that we put in there that I first saw at the Regina's Club when I was back at Nationals. And, uh, you know, when, when people see change and invest investment and things like that it, it, it kind of garners that uh, that interest and uh, and uh, we've just been very lucky um, to to communicate that and have people uh, come in but it, it has taken two to three years for people in the neighborhood like across the street from our club there's a big apartment complex and we're just now uh, getting people going you know I've been watching what you've been doing for two or three years and I finally decided to come over and say hi and then they come in and they become a new member and they go you know like 
why was I waiting so long? Like, this is so much fun. And, you know, we, we modeled our, our Monday night league um, after the Jack Attack League in Australia, um, making it super social. We've got music playing all the time. Uh, the beer is there. Uh, we didn't get so wrapped up in having skips and things like that, but rather we got people on the green bowling and having fun. And the messaging is it's more important to meet new friends than it is to keep score. And uh, I, I think that's really helped people kind of come out, fall in love with it. And now they're they're starting to come out to our Saturday jitneys and our tournaments. And some of them even dip their toe into the Premier League that uh, Derek Dillon pulled together this past weekend. And, uh, you know, it's just it's making people feel welcome and giving them the support and and uh, encouraging them to, to take the next step and having good coaches. You know, we, we trained seven new club coaches this year at, at the club. Uh, we were fortunate to get some grant money to help us with all of that. And, you know, that that was a key message from Bulls Canada is that, you know, the first face that, that people see quite often is that club coach. And if that club coach is welcoming and friendly and encouraging, um, you create a member for life. And, and I really am a firm believer in that. Uh, you touched on so many great things uh, right there. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's going to catch it, but I'll try to recap some of them. Um, <laughs> inclusivity, really, really important. The fact that um, we can um, allow anybody and everybody to play the game is mm -hmm. super, super important. It's not just um, for old folks. It's not just for um, uh, just a certain demographic of people. It's, it's for everybody. Um, music, um, having drinks, having loud, um, fun competition. Mm -hmm. Um, when I started out in Bulls and, and my club and some of the clubs I played with, it was always so quiet. And if you, if you heard some noise, people would stop playing, look at like, you know, who's making that noise and then continue. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, the fact that I know my club has started to do music and drinks and barbecues and all that kind of stuff. Um, it makes it so much more inviting. People want to see what you're doing. People want to look in and say, hey, they're having fun. Maybe I can have some fun by doing that. Um, what, what is it that they're, they're actually up to? Um, it's fantastic what you're doing. That's all I can say. Oh, well. Well, well, I appreciate that. And, and you know, the, the inclusive element, uh, you know, it really hit home for me during the pandemic. You know, like b before before everyone got locked down and and we put our lives on hold, you know, it, 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 you get into the sport and you play it. And but but then when it's missing, um, you miss the friends, you miss the, the competition, you miss the, the social aspect, the, the the physical fitness that comes with it. You know, I it really checks the boxes of so many needs that people have. And when we can make our clubs available on a very cost effective basis, the equipment is available. You know, like I, I gave up my golf membership. Um, uh, last year was the first year in 40 years I didn't swing a golf club. And, and I was an eight handicap and, and played really well and enjoyed it. But, you know, I just, there's something about bowls that, um, you know, you, you, you enjoy the camaraderie, the competition, the community sense. Uh, it's a family. It really is. It becomes a family. And, uh, you know, it's just been so great to be back on the greens again this year and having some competition. And I can't wait for us to get back into full drive next year. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're going to model our, our, our success this year again next year. We're going to get out and let people in the community know early in the season um, that, you know, come the spring and the summer, we're going to be here and we're going to be welcoming and, and come out and give it a try along with so many others. And at the same time, we're going to put a lot of effort into uh, bringing back those members um, that, that came out this year and, uh, and encouraging all of our existing members to be supportive and welcoming for every new person that comes through our gate. That's, that's uh, really just uh, terrific as Derek, or sorry, Daryl <laughs> ended up saying there. Uh, it's, so many things you touched on are things that we we love to hear we want to hear um the one i guess program i see on your guys's website and that i i know a little bit about was pride uh pride league mm. lawn bowls so uh was that the league that you were referencing there earlier or is that uh, a different uh thing that your club does 
That's a different league. Um, um, the Pride uh, League has been in operation in Calgary for about 16 years, and wow. uh, they were they were playing out of the Inglewood Club before, and uh, Inglewood was uh, was wanting to change the terms under which the league would operate, and uh, that that caused the Pride League to investigate other clubs uh, in in Calgary, and we were just very fortunate um, to uh, to have met uh, met them and David Wilson who's on our board is uh, is the coordinator of the Pride League and uh, you know it's it's it really hit home to me the importance of creating a safe environment for people to play and and you'd think in today's world that that would not that would not be an issue to anyone but that is what really hit home for me with the Pride League uh, is that they were just looking for a safe environment that they felt that you know they could play and 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 would be welcomed and uh it, it, as soon as i heard that statement it's it's like you know please come and join us because um you know it, it kind of breaks my heart that there's a group of people uh out there in society who just don't feel um safe wherever they go and uh, it's just been such a great fit and uh we, we'd love to to see that continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and you know what i love about the pride league at our club too is that they they're welcoming to everybody and you know please come out and join the pride league play with us and we get a lot of our club members uh coming out and playing best part is they have uh, before covid they had some great meals uh that that would be prepared and uh, for five dollars you got this great incredible potluck dinner that you could show up for and it was a highlight for so many of our members and i can't wait once covid is done to see that reinstituted again because it's just a entirely welcoming social feel and it you know people it's almost like the bowls are secondary you know it, it's to come out and play be together be social um and welcoming and uh, you know the bowls come out and 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 they play that too and and it's just a real sense of welcoming and, and home um for for such a great group so uh you know we kind of took that and modeled our new bowler league on monday nights uh you know to try to create that same sense of belonging and safety and regardless of age or ability or background or anything like that and uh you know it's it's worked out really well with the help of our club coaches and Derek Dillon uh, adding some additional coaching along the way it's it's uh that seems to be a winning formula um and if we could do that on every night i you know it'd be my personal goal to see our greens filled Every night of the week, every afternoon, every morning, I would love to see our our facility 100% utilized, and and it's it's getting better all the time as people feel like they have more options to be able to come out and play at our club too. Yeah, that's awesome. I I really wish more clubs would take advantage of the the groups uh, that are out there in their communities and connect with them, mm -hmm. and bring them in and and show them um, exactly what bowls is about and the social aspect and. Um, just including them, really, um, when they may not know that it's out there and they're they're looking for stuff to do. They're absolutely looking they, for stuff to do. They they really are, Daryl. You know, like it's uh, and it was Ken Ken Olsvik, you know, who who said to me uh, during the pandemic. He said, Mike, this could be our best year ever. You know, I just have a feeling that people are really going to want to get out and you know do something that's in their backyard because they're not going to travel uh, they can't travel this year um and they want to reconnect with friends and and make new ones and uh you know i really have to uh, credit ken for his insight because uh, that got us fired up and and it just only excites me about all the potential other groups that are out there you know we get lots of corporate groups big groups small groups approaching us and i know some of the clubs in calgary have you know pension uh clubs from some of the oil uh, oil and gas companies that come out and play you know on a wednesday morning or something like that there's all these pockets of, of groups who would love to come and explore or uh, explore the clubs find a unique time that they can play as long as they feel welcomed um you know our, our sport has something for everybody I just wanted to, to touch on that again. Um, uh, talking about the Pride League that you have, I know there's some clubs in my area that um, do various groups like uh, uh, First Responders. They do a league to try to mm. bring them out. Um, they had a real big success with um, a transplant group. So it's a group that all surrounded themselves around having transplants of some kind. Wow. Um, wow. And they were looking for a sport. Obviously, not all of them can do full physical stuff. Um, and they included them as well and, and had huge success. So there's tons of groups that aren't necessarily oh. big, 
but they're they're pretty hardcore and if, if you get them in there they will stay for sure uh, i couldn't agree more you know in our neighborhood we've got a bunch of first can uh, uh, new canadians and uh, i would love nothing better than to try to encourage them to come down to the club and get to know us we're we're two blocks away and uh you know with uh, with the apartment complex across the street you know i know if i was you know in a hot summer evening sitting on my balcony watching and hearing the music coming it's like what am i doing here i should be out <laughs> with the fun and being down there and having a four dollar beer and and uh you know meeting some new people and and uh it it, it it's it's the challenge of kind of getting the message out there um but as long as the message is that you know you're welcoming and and uh, uh safe uh i i think it sells itself because you know really we got 70 new members this year wow. by reaching out to the facebook um neighborhood uh group uh within wildwood and spruce cliff and we ran kind of a very short advertisement for two weeks uh, in March and early April, and that resulted in 70 new members. We basically had to shut it down because I was afraid we were going to be overwhelmed with too many people. Wow. Um, and and uh, you know we we had people you know coming in in groups of four, groups of eight, fours, pairs, couples, you know all sorts of things. And uh, you know I think it's 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 not advertising on your website. I, I I don't think that's the way to do it. I think you need to reach out to the Facebook social media groups, like the Wildwood Awesome Neighbors has something like eight or nine hundred followers, and you know you reach out to those little pockets. Doesn't cost us a dime. You you show them friendly pictures and how much fun people have. You say that youth can play. You know your kids can come out and and. Uh, um, thanks to some help from Bulls Alberta, we were able to have all of our youth play this year for free. Um, and, you know, we added 15 new youth youth uh, bowlers. And so on a, on a Sunday morning, we had one green completely dedicated to all of our youth bowlers. And we had uh, the other green dedicated to practice and, and other, other games. And, like, to have Sunday completely dedicated full on both greens was amazing um you know I, and i think it's all those creative ideas daryl that you're talking about there's so many groups out there um that if it's introduced in a welcoming way um and and you know you you, you don't badger new people about the etiquette of the sport but rather just get them rolling bowls mm -hmm. you know get them out having fun uh support them encourage them to come back get them to tell their buddies and bring out more friends you know it just it just blossoms and and i love the ideas that you've mentioned daryl because it really gets me thinking about what we could be doing next year you know it really does it's it's endless and yeah, that's some terrific ideas there with the uh, the facebook groups and the, the neighborhoods that you're you're talking about i know that that's what our club has had some success with is the different neighborhood zones we've advertised with them or just ask them to share our uh, open house type stuff so i, I mm -hmm. that is a, a great idea that i think a lot of clubs if they can utilize that it's as you say essentially it's free advertising and if they have five six hundred followers or whatever it might be yeah. it's obviously quite productive to reach out to them to get that little extra help yeah it's amazing you know we added the 70 new members and we didn't spend a dime uh, on the advertising it was it was fabulous That's awesome. fabulous um, I guess the one, the other topic we wanted to sort of cover with you guys uh, was about the Alberta Premier League you just had over the uh, the weekend there. So that was a pretty interesting event to sort of see the little bit of streaming as we talked about earlier. The Peter had a little bit of streaming going, and then you guys had quite a bit of advertising. Derek obviously spearheaded that whole whole idea. Um, had some pretty cool name teams. I, I was actually kind of excited. I think we talked about it on the show a few weeks back where we had the Stanley Park Stingers, Rotary Park Rangers, Edmonton Indoor Pyramids. That was the, the most interesting of the names, I think. And then the Calgary teams were, were cool names too. But can you give us a little background on about the Alberta Premier League? Uh, it was just such a blast. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Derek uh, worked with Bulls Alberta 
uh, trying to create, you know, a new game format. Um, you know, we're, you know, trying to keep the interest up with the competitive bowlers within the province. And Derek came up with this wonderful idea of having teams of five get together. Um, he rallied around some sponsors, and including uh, Ken Olsvik's uh, Specialty Turf. Um, our, our club donated some money to it as well. Uh, and we, we received some money from Bulls Alberta. So there was some good prize money that was involved in it. Ten teams were formed uh, of five, and, uh, you know, we had teams from Edmonton coming down, which was fabulous as well, and uh, just a great way to reconnect with everyone. And, and we had participation by some of Alberta's best players, you know, Joanna Cooper, Jen McDonald, uh, John McDonald, um, you know, just just to name a few. And, and the level of competition, given the fact we really haven't played all that much, was was in, was amazing. And, uh, y- you know, it was, it was just... A, a, a great brain uh, child of, of Derek's to, to bring together. We can't wait to see how it takes off again uh, next year. And, uh, you know, we were just uh, very honored to, to have our club be the host for it. And, uh, you know, Peter Mock again got his live streaming going. And, I, you know, he ran out of data is what happened <laughs> on his phone. So <laughs> we were struggling to try to get another phone. But, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, it just shows that, you know, with a little bit of, of uh, um, ingenuity and, and uh, some, some keen interest on the, on the behalf of a few people, you know, you can move mountains and, and create some pretty amazing things uh, when you work together with a common goal. And, uh, you know, we can only just thank Derek for all of his effort in, in what, he, what he did for that. And uh, uh, we can't wait to compete again next year. We, we, we look forward to who's going to be the host next year and who else is going to be there. A little bit more on the Premier League. I was I was really curious about it. Um, usually, when you see provincials and uh, things being played, you see the typical people. You see a few new teams, but usually you see the top teams, the ones that are going to Canadians, and it's generally the same group of people that play. But in the Alberta Premier League, although I saw some um, players that I recognized, it looked like you had a ton of new people playing. Um, what kind of uh, environment did that create for for people that may have never tasted like true competition before? Well, you know, we we've had a lot of people in in our club who uh, have been you know climbing that ladder in their competitive play and and eager to to get it to the next level and uh, you know we're we're creating just this upswing of new talent coming out of the province and and uh, Calgary and 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 our and our club seems to be attracting some some good players that way so it was pretty natural for them to kind of want to get involved and and uh, you know uh, dip their toe in the water to see what this is like because it's pretty intimidating for new players when it's called a premier league right and 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 the names that were there um and and our club in particular opened it up to anyone and everyone who wanted to play if you put your name down on the sign-up sheet, if you're a first-year bowler, um, we welcomed you. We got you onto a team. Our games committee created the balanced teams um, to work it out so that everyone had an opportunity to try it. And for some people, um, it was their very first provincial event ever. And we were playing in some cold weather conditions, um, you know, and and strenuous play. Even though the game format was shorter, uh, you're still out there for a good six, seven hours um, on Saturday in some challenging conditions. So, you know, I was afraid some of them might decide, you know, what I'm not coming back. But you know, they they grinned and bared it, and they they fought hard, played well, contributed uh, very well to the teams. And I think what it's going to do is just encourage them to say, hey, you know, provincial competition is is something I'm keen for, and I really admire. Uh, those players who came out as as new players uh, to give it a give it a whirl, and uh, I think they surprised themselves. And I think we're going to see a whole bunch more new competitors uh, in the inv- Alberta environment going forward. I'm very proud of that. It's awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> great to hear that. That you pretty much uh, would allow anybody that you that wanted to play to give them that shot and give them the the ability to play in the event. That's that's one of the easiest ways to get people into bowls, get them into that uh, early. I guess for going for the athlete development 
path or pathway that they sort of lay out Bulls Canada that's one of the primary primary ways is get them into the competition see if it's something they're interested in and if you have the coaching involved as well it's a great way to potentially get those players that want to strive for that extra level of competition well uh, it, it, it's great and you know although i'm not a certified competitive coach yet I'm, I'm working with a few of our athletes already and to see how working alongside a coach can bring that higher level of confidence in yourself um you know their ability to compete just starts to rise so very quickly and uh, it, it's it's a thrill to see so many of our up-and-coming players um get that ambition to try to compete at higher levels. And uh, I, I'm just going to be so excited next year when I'm fully certified to be working with more athletes at our club uh, and in Calgary and Southern Alberta. Uh, you know, I'll be working alongside with Derek Dillon and uh, trying to, to help him um, create a, a broader coaching network next year because there's nothing like the thrill of standing on that mat at nationals and, uh, you know, believing in yourself and, and, and playing uh, as well as you can, reaching your potential potential and knowing that you're as good as any other player in the country you know there it's just a great thrill to to be able to to help someone achieve that so that's going to be our objective next year working with our up-and-coming athletes yeah i think mike can can agree with me here that uh coaching is is a fantastic side of bowls uh some people think that playing is just the way to go and they play forever and never think about coaching but um, I think we both tasted it. We we know that you can be even more nervous uh, watching the game than you are actually playing the game. And the the feeling you get when your player or your team that you're coaching does so well um, just makes everything that you do worthwhile. Oh, I, I totally agree with that. And and you know to to see somebody achieve their full potential. Um, you know, and, and, and know that you had a little bit to do with that. And, and you know how hard they've worked. I think that's the thing, right? It's, uh, and, and I'm studying different sports and sports psychology along the way. And, and it really comes down to putting in that effort. And, you know, those who can focus their time and focus uh, what they're trying to achieve, see the results come that much quicker. And, you know, our sport offers coaching for free. Yeah. You know, it just, it blows my mind, you know, try to get free coaching in golf, you know, and, and what are you going to pay for that? That's what this sport is just so amazing for, you know, you can get into it very low cost. Like when I joined Bulls, I gave up my golf membership at one of Calgary's big clubs because one year's annual dues covered my, my uh, bowling uh, fees for 50 years. You know, it's like I gave up Jeez. golf immediately, you know, cause <clears throat> now you know, financially, this is the sport for me, and our our club has new equipment. We've got f access to fantastic coaching. Um, you know, it, it's just such a great sport for that for people. It's just so much fun, and and I just wanted to be able to give back to the bowling community that's been so welcoming to me, and try to get as many people in our province that same thrill uh, that I've been so uh, fortunate and lucky uh, to have achieved. Because uh, I know there's a lot of people who have played for many years and haven't had the luck that that i've happened to have in a short period of time and i want to help as many people as i can achieve those goals uh, it's just uh, and, and and that's that's where uh, coaching and working along with people is just uh, so awesome so awesome yeah can't uh, can't agree anymore with what you said there because daryl sort of alluded we're we're both pretty experienced coaches and as you say when you see all the work that athletes put into playing the game developing and sort of going along that pathway of becoming a more competitive player it's it's very rewarding or getting them getting to see them get that opportunity where you're saying no better feeling to step on the mat and play at nationals so it's great to see your athletes experience that and get that opportunity as they go i guess uh next year me and you'll be a competition who's uh the more the certified competition level coach sooner i guess because i'm in the same process as you right now so hey c congratulations michael <laughs> that's great you, you know and they're going to be learning from the best you know like your whole family is just such an inspiration uh right across the country you know you 
your mom is legendary. Uh, and I know when I when I went to Regina to compete at the Nationals, you know, hearing about your family, uh, it was just it was just so great to to see the influence you've had on on such a great community because uh, you know uh, Regina, the club of Regina and Saskatchewan, they they love bulls and they sure get behind their sports. And it's it's so neat to to meet a family and and have a chance to chat with you directly here because um, you know you're one of my idols uh, and I get to see you guys on this show all the time. So you know it's uh, it, it, it's great to to be part of that. And congratulations, Mike Michael, on what you're doing there with with coaching. You'll you'll find it so incredibly rewarding. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the path. Like I've been working on it a couple of years now, and I've finally put the wheels in motion. So early next year, same as you, I'll be certified competition. So, well, look out, Saskatchewan, man! Your <laughs> athletes are going to be hitting it out of the park. <laughs> That's the hope. <laughs> well done. Well done. So, say, do we have uh, anything more we wanted to touch on here, Daryl? Uh, I. Th- that's a ton of information uh, in just a yep. short period of time. I think uh, Mike, um, Calgary Mike, uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for Mike. being on the show. Short beard Mike. Mike. Short beard Mike. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Um, it's it's very inspirational hearing all the stuff that Calgary Lawn is doing, um, all the great people that you have there, um, just doing the work, um, f- having the ideas. Um, to make it inclusive, safe, uh, bring people from your community. It's it's all great information that I hope that our viewers take to their clubs, take to their provincial associations, and I really ask the question of what can we be doing to uh, to raise the level of our club. Well, and, and you know, like at I, as I said at the onset, you know, I, I really have to thank Jake and, and Anna at Bulls Canada for uh, a couple of years ago, really getting us to start thinking about how we operate our club strategically, um, helping us think about, uh, um, you know, how do we, how do we, you know, think about this as a business, you know, you're, you're running a small business here. How do you make it grow? And, uh, you know, thank goodness they helped us because through the pandemic, we were able to, you know, not only um survive but i think flourish i think we use the downtime to strategically set ourselves up and and i can't thank bulls canada and 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 the support uh from them and bulls alberta for all their support and our city representatives here in calgary um we, we've been very fortunate to work with some great partners and uh you know being part of, of what you're doing here is is uh, uh is every bit as important so thank you for what you guys are doing too thank you Thank you for coming. We appreciate uh, the interview. Well, well, cheers, you guys. This was on my bucket list to one day get on here. I was hoping it would be to talk about my great play of beating Greg or, or uh, Greg Wilson or uh, or Pat Bird and the singles at Nationals. But, hey, I'll take this. This is great. <laughs> I can tell you, when you do, we will have you on here so you can gloat to everybody ah. that we're – that you did it yeah we'll gladly <laughs> right. give you that we'll gall- gladly give you that platform <laughs> uh we'll make it a date then sounds good guys Perfect. i appreciate that very much all right thank you mike all right thanks guys thank you everyone take care <laughs>